Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We also have a Telegram group which you can join and you can access all the lecture related information. And then we have the Google Drive where the PDF of all lectures are available and we have the master integration key by which you can navigate between the Google Drive as well as the YouTube. These are the disclaimers and we are with phase 3 which is recorded pathology lectures. And today we have Pursue 23H, which is a third session for genetic disorders and we are streaming from Ames, Bhubaneswar, India. And today's lecture is chromosomal disorders and to talk on that we have Dr. Amit Kumar Adya, who is an MD from PGI Chandigarh. <coughs> he is a, <coughs> <he's> a professor in the Department of Pathology and Lab Medicine, Ames, Bhubaneswar. He has been the ex-professor of Kalinga Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhubaneswar. He's got 118 publications in international and national journals, one book chapter, 600 projects, with 20, 21 years of teaching and research experience. He has completed five collaborative research projects funded by DBT and BRNS and was, was also awarded the best paper award in the IEPM 2005. So I would request Dr. Amit Kumar Adya to start his lecture on chromosomal disorders. Over to you, Dr. Adya. Thank you so much. Hello, students. In this lecture, I shall talk about some cro common chromosomal disorders. But before doing that, let us first review the structure of a chromosome. We all know that the chromosome has a short arm which is termed as P arm and a long arm which is termed as Q arm. The P is derived from the word petit which means small and Q is just the next letter to P. Both the short and long arms have different regions which are termed as 1 and 2. Each of these regions are again divided into certain bands which are again labeled as 1, 2, 3 and 4. Each of these bands have areas known as sub bands. The location of a particular gene can be expressed in the form of an expression as written on the right side of this chromosome XP11.2 refers to the location of a chromosome which is present on the X chromosome short arm region 1 band 1 and sub band 2 you should read this as XP11.2 and not XP11.2 G banding is basically a technique where the chromosomes are stained with a stain called GIMSA, hence the name G. The stain gives a banded appearance to the chromosome. The areas where the chromosome is condensed gives rise to the pale color and the area where the chromosome is open gives rise to the light color and hence the chromosome on under microscope appears to be banded. A karyotype is a pictorial representation of all the chromosomes of a cell. The chromosomes are segregated, they are paired, they are then numbered as 1, 2, 3, 4 and X and Y chromosomes and they are arranged in a serial order and a picture is taken. This represents the karyotype of a cell and the process is known as karyotyping. You can also see here in this picture that all the chromosomes are arranged according to their size. The chromosome number 1 is largest size and the centromere is present at the center. And there are certain bands on the chromosome. Based on the size, the location of the centromere and the number of bands on a given chromosome, the chromosomes can be identified as 1, 2, 3 or else. You can also note that the Y chromosome, the last chromosome in the picture is very small as compared to the X chromosome. Now these chromosomal disorders can occur due to two things. There can be a numerical abnormality in the chromosomes or you can have a structural defect. 
numerical abnormality means the number of chromosomes in a cell is abnormal when there is a, an exact multiple of 23 then the cell is said to have euploidy so euploidy is the normal status where the person have 46 chromosome when the number of chromosomes is not an exact multiple of 23 it is called aneuploidy the most common type of aneuploidy are monosomies and trisomies a monosomy means one of the chromosome from a pair is missing so the person will have 45 chromosomes and either of the one of the autosome or one of the sex chromosome will be missing the example of monosomy is turner syndrome trisomy means one extra chromosome is available so the person will have 47 chromosomes either one extra sex chromosome is available the example of which is Kleinefelter syndrome or an extra autosome is available such as the down syndrome mosaicism is a condition where the same person will have different types of cells the cells will have different chromosomes like one population of, of cell will have 46 chromosome another population might have 47 chromosome another population might have 45 chromosome and that occurs in the same person such a person is said to have a mosaicism most common causes of this aneuploidy are non-disjunction and anaphase lag we'll talk about them shortly as i said another way of having a chromosomal disorder is a structural defect in the chromosome here the number of chromosome remains 46 but the structure of the chromosome is abnormal a big chunk of the chromosome is either lost then it is known as a deletion the chromosome may bend on itself and the ends may join to form a ring chromosome or there can be an inversion translocation or isochromosome formation we will see the pictorial representation of each of these kind of defects shortly as i said most of the causes of aneuploidy are non-disjunction non-disjunction usually occurs during meiosis it can occur during the meiosis 1 or during the meiosis phase 2 if it occurs during the meiosis phase 1 it may happen that one of the chromosome fail to separate so one of the daughter nuclei will have an extra pair of chromosome and the other daughter nuclei arising from the this cell will have one less chromosome the end result will be four daughter nuclei two of them having an extra chromosome and two of them having one chromosome less if the one having one chromosome less fertilizes with a normal spermatozoa or ovum then it will produce a zygote having 45 chromosomes that condition will be monosomy if the gamete having one chromosome extra gets fertilized with a normal spermatozoa or ovum then it will have one chromosome extra that is the cell will have 47 chromosomes and this condition is known as trisomy the same thing can happen if the meiosis if the non-disjunction occurs in the meiosis 2 the end result will be there will be four gametes one will have an extra chromosome the other will have one chromosome less whereas the other two gametes will have normal number of chromosomes i hope you understood what is non-disjunction another cause for aneuploidy is anaphase lag what happens here is during anaphase one of the chromosome lags behind rest of the chromosomes so when the nucleus separates into two this lagging chromosome does not go into any of the nucleus rather it remains in the cytoplasm and it is lost from the cell so finally you will have 
two daughter nuclei one having normal set of chromosome and the other having one less chromosome so this condition usually gives rise to monosomies now talking about the structural abnormalities of the chromosome the most common structural abnormality of chromosome are translocations translocation as the name suggest a part of one chromosome breaks and it moves to another chromosome then condition is known as translocation it may happen that part of two chromosomes break and they interchange among themselves that is known as a balanced reciprocal translocation it may sometimes happen that two chromosomes are involved in the translocation and the break point in the chromosomes in is at a region such that a very large chromosome is formed and the other chromosome is is very small the small chromosome is usually lost from the cell during cell cycle such kind of translocations are known as robertsonian translocation isochromosome formation this happens when the break in the centromere is horizontal normally the centromere the break through the centromere should be vertical so that each of the daughter chromatid which is formed should have one short arm and one long arm but what happens here is the break is horizontal so that the two daughter chromatids which are formed one gets both the short arms the other get both the long arms such a condition is known as isochromosome formation deletion is a situation where a part of the chromosome is lost this deletion can occur at the end of a chromosome or it can occur within the chromosome or it can affect on either side of the centromere inversion is a condition where there is a break in the dna sequence at two points in a chromosome and the whole thing inverts on itself and a new dna sequence is created sometimes both the breaks are on one side of a centromere such kind of inversions are known as paracentric inversions one side of the center whereas sometimes the break can occur on both sides of the centromere giving rise to what is known as a pericentric inversion the ring chromosome forms when both ends of a chromosomes are deleted and the ends become sticky they stick to each other forming a ring like structure and the deleted parts of the chromosomes remain as small fragments or they are removed from the cell so structural abnormalities can have include translocations which can be balanced reciprocal which can be robertsonian there can be an isochromosome formation deletions inversions and ring chromosome formation so all of these structural abnormality do not give rise to any alteration in the total number of chromosomes hence they do not alter the ploidy of the cell having understood this let us discuss some of the common chromosomal disorders the most common that you will find is down syndrome it is characterized by an extra chromosome number 21 hence it is also known as trisomy 21 it is fairly common you can find one in every 700 newborns with this disease the major risk factor involved in formation of down syndrome is maternal age with increasing maternal age the risk of having down syndrome children increases many folds paternal age does not have any 
much effect on the occurrence of down syndrome 95 percent of these patients will have an extra chromosome 21 and that is mostly due to amniotic non disjunction 4 percent of the patients will have a robotsonian type of translocation leading to formation of a 46xx type karyotype 1% will have mosaics mosaics include two population of cells one having 46xx karyotype and the other having 47xx with an extra 21 chromosome the clinical features of the down syndrome are very unique the patients usually have a very flat appearing face the palpebral fissures or the opening of the eye is usually oblique and the epicanthic fold over the eye is very prominent this is what is known as a typical mongoloid faces more important than that is mental retardation down syndrome is the most common cause of mental retardation in children and mental retardation is usually severe the iq is in the range of 25 to 50 these children usually are very gentle they have a shy manner and paradoxically they appear more happy than normal individuals because they are not bothered about anything in their life in addition to these things these patients do develop a lot of congenital heart defects intestinal stenosis umbilical hernia and predisposition to leukemia the heart defects usually involve the either the septal defects or the atrioventricular valve malformation the septal defect most commonly is the ostium primum type this comes as a mcq ventricular septal defects is usually membranous type the patients can have atresia of the esophagus and small bowel atresia refer to very small narrowing of the lumen of the esophagus these patients are prone to develop acute leukemia which is blood cancer most common type of acute leukemia that develops in down syndrome is aml m7 m7 is a megakaryoblastic type of acute myeloid leukemia you will learn more about aml all in next semester Another frequently occurring condition, a myeloid neoplasm occurs in Down syndrome is known as transient myeloproliferative neoplasm. This is unique to Down syndrome. In addition to all these things, neuropathological changes occur in the brain and patient may develop abnormal immune response and autoimmune diseases. These patients usually survive up to 45 to 50 years of age. Apart from Down syndrome, which is an autosomal chromosomal disorder, we can have sex linked chromosomal disorders. Most of the sex linked chromosomal disorders occur with the X chromosome. We all know that the females have two X chromosome and males have only one X chromosome. The X chromo one of the X chromosome in female, however, is inactive and the other is active the inactive x chromosome appears as a bar body in the cell we all have this prior knowledge in fact loin hypothesis states regarding the inactivation of the x chromosome sometimes loin hypothesis is asked as a short note there are four hypotheses it states that one of the X chromosome is genetically active and the other is inactive. The inactive chromosome X chromosome may either be the maternal origin or from the paternal origin. Actually, the inactivation is random. In some cells, the paternal X chromosome is inactivated, whereas in other cells, the maternal X chromosome is inactivated. This inactivation of chromosome usually occurs during the blastocyst stage of the development. On the day 
fifth of the embryonic life once inactivated in a given cell the same chromosome will remain inactive in all its daughter cells the inactive chromosome acts as a is seen as a bar body as you can see here in this picture this is a squamous cell and the nucleus of the squamous cell the chromatin you can see some chromatin are dark and some are light which are hetero and euchromatin and there is a small dot like structure here which is known as the bar body usually the oral squamous cells are scraped from the buccal mucosa and stain is staining is done with 1% acetoarsin that give rise to this presence of please remember the name of the stain it is 1% acetoarsin sometimes asked as a mcq similarly bar bodies can also be seen in the peripheral blood smear in the neutrophils as you can see here a dumb a dumbbell like protrusion from the nucleus y chromosomes y chromosome is only present on the male there are about 75 it is a very small chromosome only 75 genes are present on the y chromosome and most of which are involved in spermatogenesis a loss of y chromosome leads to absence of spermatogenesis and hence infertility so pa patients who have a loss of y chromosome are infertile and hence cannot transmit any y related disease to their offsprings hence y linked inheritance is not seen next common type of disorder is the klinefelter syndrome this is the most important and common cause of male hypogonadism it is also quite common as you can see one in every 660 live male births suffer from klinefelter syndrome usually the disease comes to notice at puberty the patients have a euchnoid body habitus they are usually tall having long legs and long fingers although they are phenotypically male but their body character resembles that of a female they have narrow shoulders a wide hip their external genitalia the testes and the penis are small they do not develop the typical male type baldness they have a very poor beard and mustache growth they do not develop chest hair however they may develop sometimes breast and they are also prone for breast cancer their pubic hair distribution is also female type these patients sometimes develop type 2 diabetes and mitral valve prolapse biochemical evaluation of this patient shows that they have high levels of follicular stimulating hormone and estrogen and low levels of testosterone which explain the female type body character although they are genotypically and phenotypically male it's the most common cause of male infertility because in this condition the patients have atrophic testes the testes do not have spermatozoa or spermatogenesis is absent in the testes they are at a high risk of breast cancer and germ cell tumors germ cell tumors are tumors which arise from the germ cells of the testes they are like seminomas teratomas you will learn about germ cell tumor later on during neoplasia classes the patients also are very prone for development of autoimmune diseases like sle systemic lupus erythematosus karyotyping of this person show that 90% of these patient have an extra x chromosome 47 xxy and rest 10% have mosaic patterns 
including cells some cells having 46 xy and some having 47 xxy another common disorder is the turner syndrome this is due to a complete or partial monosomy of the x chromosome as i said monosomy means loss of one chromosome so the karyotype is usually in 75 percent cases is 45 x this results in hypogonadism although the patients are phenotypically female it is very common it occurs one in every 2500 live born females although 75 percent of these patients have a 45 x karyotype rest of the 25 percent low so many structural abnormalities in the chromosome in the form of isochromosome formation of the long arm of x chromosome or ring chromosome formation of the x chromosome or deletions of part short arm or the long arm of x chromosome many patients usually are mosaics they have a variety of karyotype as shown in this slide The typical clinical features of this patient are these patients are usually short statured they have a broad or webbed neck the webbed neck is basically a result of a tumor known as cystic hygroma the patients are born with a large lump in the neck that lump is basically a benign tumor of the lymphatics which is known as a lymphangioma this tumor is cystic and watery appearing hence the name cystic hygroma but this tumor gradually regresses on it by itself leaving behind a loose fold of skin on the neck which gives rise to the webbing of the neck the patients develop a lot of cardiac anomalies which include a bicuspid aortic valve at puberty the females do not show development of any female sexual character they suffer from primary amenorrhea Men, uh, menstrual cycle do, do not start in these patients which is known as primary amenorrhea and in fact turner syndrome is the most common cause of primary amenorrhea in females patient may develop autoimmune hypothyroidism or insulin resistance so these patients usually they they are brought up like females but at the time of puberty they do not develop any female secondary female sexual character that is how this disease comes to notice and then they are brought to the clinics for evaluation and you find the typical picture of short stature waving of neck primary amenorrhea and non-development of secondary sexual character when you suspect the presence of Turner syndrome. Next is sex determination. Sex determination can be either genetic or the, it can be gonadal or ductal or genital sex or phenotypic sex. Genetic sex means you do a karyotyping and find out that a person is having XX or XY chromosome and you determine the sex of the individual. Whereas gonadal sex refers to you examine the gonad if it's a testis then the person is a male if the gonad is a ovary then you call that person as female. Ductal means the Mullerian duct, the mesonephric or Wolfian duct and the paramesonephric duct you examine the duct and then decide whether the person is male or female and genital sex is by just examining physical examination of the genitalia so sexual ambiguity appears when there is a discrepancy between the phenotypic sex and the genetic or the gonadal sex for example if phenotypically a person is appearing male but you find that karyotypically the person is a female then this is a condition known as sexual ambiguity 
such sexually ambiguous persons are termed as hermaphrodites. Some of them can be true hermaphrodites and some are pseudo hermaphrodites. A true hermaphrodite is a person who has both ovarian and testicular tissue. Sometimes one of the gonad is ovary and the other gonad is testis. Or it may happen that the same gonad has both testicular tissue and ovarian tissue. Such a condition is known as ovo testis. Such persons are called true hermaphrodites which is extremely rare. Pseudo hermaphrodites are more common. Pseudo hermaphrodites can be a male pseudo hermaphrodite or a female pseudo hermaphrodite. A male pseudohermaphrodite is a person whose gonads are testes but outer appearance and the external genitalia appearance is female type. On the other hand, a female pseudohermaphrodite is a person whose external genitalia is male but the gonad is ovary. So that's all for now. Hope you have understood most of the things. We can have a discussion on it in the live sessions. Thank you.